Hi guys and welcome to part 4 of the Cardassian Galore class cruiser. Today is good news and it's bad news. More bad news than there is good news. I guess sometimes in the modelling world you do tend to have more bad news than good news. Um, and it kind of does go against the theory at the moment that modelling is meant to be a good stress reliever because this has actually caused me more stress than anything else. Um, but never mind. I think, to be fair though, nine tenths of the issue um, has been down to me. Um, I think it's just a case of that I've rushed in where angels fear to tread, to be fair. Now the problem that I have is the fact that my nice, neat windows are no longer nice, neat windows. I've had problem with using the acrylic. Now basically what's happened is some of the windows uh, were very opaque and weren't transmitting light at all well. Other windows had massive air bubbles in them. And some of the windows, the monomer liquid didn't penetrate all the way down into the acrylic powder itself. So when I pulled the tape away, unfortunately there was a film of acrylic powder left and it wouldn't transmit any light at all and it looked really horrible. So I had to sort of try and remedy that. So I went online to the Sci-Fi Model Action Forum um, and just generally asked a question there of you know what could have gone wrong and what can I do to try and put that right now one of the guys on there suggested that I do the windows sort of like you know just a couple at a time which I did do this time around but he also said that the acrylic should just um, come out he said it'd just be slightly rubberized get your knife in there dig it in and pull it on out unfortunately that wasn't the case. This stuff had set absolutely rock hard. It was like concrete. Now, the only problem with that is, is the fact that I was having a problem with my pin vise trying to drill it out. And that led to the windows being distorted. Now, the windows are a lot bigger than what they normally should be. But hopefully with some masking tape, <clears throat> um, when I primer the model, I should be able to resolve those issues but the windows definitely are not looking pretty I mean at the moment this is one hell of an ugly swan and keeping fingers crossed really that these issues are going to be resolved along the way but I'll show you um, <clears throat> how bad some of the windows are so I'll bring the model up close I mean you can see there that those windows are gone from being sort of two mil long and half a mil wide to about three mil long and about sort of one and a half to two mil wide um, but the good thing is is that if I get a torch and shine it under the light so you see you can see that they are transmitting the light quite nicely now um, I've also done a lot of work on this model putting the windows in that weren't already on there I think altogether there was about um, 80 lights well, sorry, 80 windows, should I say, that were missing off the model that I've put in. Um, they're all in the, in, in the right place. As I say, all I need to do now is just mask these windows off um, before I start painting it. And hopefully, by the time it's all painted, those windows will be looking okay. Now, I've still got a few issues with some of the windows where there are little air bubbles in there or it's not quite as transparent as I, I would like it to be. But to be honest, after four attempts of um, trying to work with this acrylic, it's got to the point where, you know, I think it's safe to say, right, okay, they're as good as they're going to be. Um, and let's carry on with the model. If I try to get them absolutely perfect, I would most probably be here until hell froze over. Um, so I've kind of thought, right, okay, enough's enough. Let's get on with it. You know, I suppose it's one of those things, as a novice, I'm bound to have these problems, you know, and I'm going to learn these sort of hints and tips and tricks as I go along, and hopefully the next time I do this, it won't be quite so bad. <clears throat> okay, so that's the main uh, section of the hole. <clears throat> I also I had some issues, whoops, sorry, out of shot there. I also had some issues with the side windows as well. Um, let's have a look, there you go. Again, they're a lot bigger than what they used to be, but once again, 
the good news is if I get my torch you can see uh, that they do let through um, a good amount of light there which is really really good and so I'm quite happy with that again it's just masking tape and that will sort that out the other one that I had the problem with is the bridge section of it now again you can see that some of those windows are a little bit large but again as I say that's due down to the issues that I've had with the acrylic um, but again putting the torch through them they do light up quite nicely now one other problem that I did have is some monomark liquid did escape and I'm not sure whether that's yep there you go you can see it, it actually melted the plastic that's meant to be a thruster port um, it's kind of meant to look like that um, but yeah so that actually melted the plastic for me quite nicely so I've got to go back in there and do some repair work and get that repaired um, hopefully it won't take too long to do that just a little bit of uh, squad of and putty and, and, and just reworking it should be fine so that's the bad news over and done with thank god we cry so I'll move on to the next bit which is uh, quite good I'll just get these out of the way now <clears throat> the good news is we've got a pole in with some wires running through so that means we've got some lights in um, you have to excuse the wiring because it's not one of my strongest points to be fair um, I've done it as neatly as I possibly can but it's still not that great and one other thing as well is that I've tried to buy the um, magnet wire that um, Boyd at Trekwork uses um, it's a polymer coated magnet wire but for some strange reason can't seem to find it in the UK here can find the enamel coated but unfortunately the enamel coated still does uh, make a short circuit if you get your wires crossed over them <clears throat> Whereas the stuff that Boyd uses, because it's a polymer coated, it doesn't. Uh, and I can't find it anywhere in this country unless I buy it from China. But if I buy it from China, you have to buy it by the roll and you're looking at a couple of grand. Well, you know, I'm never going to use that amount of wire in my life. So, but there you go. If anybody knows um, of any place in the UK where you can buy polymer coated um, magnet wire, then please let me know because um, it would be nice because it is thinner than this um, now on this model I did say that it would most pro probably only need three or four um, strips of lighting to, to help light up the inside slightly wrong uh, we've got a few more than that um, I've got a couple of big strips down that one uh, down that size there and then two strips of three there and then two strips of three there I've also got a strip of three there for uh, lighting up the um, phaser array and then I've also got another strip down the back end there <coughs> sorry excuse me guys that's mainly to light up uh, the opaque parts that I've, I've put up there I've also got some wiring coming in from um, the towel section as well to for, for the rear lights there that needs to come in and I'm most probably going to make the circuit by mounting it there I'm not sure yet though because if that fails it means that that up there is going to stop working so I might actually route it down um, and just connect it directly into these sockets here but this is looking pretty good to be fair um, you know I've tested it with the top on it lets out a lot of light and the thrusters on this side uh, and this side here will be lit up quite nicely I've also drilled out all of the little uh, domey bits um, for the model there's also one on that side too um, and on that side now the only problem is that when I was drilling these out it did mean that the pegs that were sitting on either side and around there and there uh, are no longer there so I've only got the two mounting pegs at the front there to actually hold the whole thing together. <laughs> so <clears throat> when I come to glue it together, I'm going to have to be really, really careful and make sure that it is aligned really good before, um, you know, before I leave it to set properly. But apart from that, it's actually not looking too bad, guys. Um, got one more thing to show you, 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the uh, the camera for a minute because I do need to set this up. I've got to work this off of a battery, um, and it's a bit fiddly. So if you bear with me, I'll get this uh, set up, and I'll, I'll be back in a second, guys. Hi guys and welcome back. Um, now this is a tail section. As you can most probably remember from previous videos, um, I have said that I wanted to light the two end caps. Um, so what I've done so far in order to achieve this is I've installed two 3mm LEDs. Um, these needed to be filed down. And then I've coated them in Tamiya Clear Orange. Um, now unfortunately the light from these doesn't penetrate the back half. Um, there is a dome that sits on, on, on the top uh, so what I've had to do to, to get that to light up is install a third one just there um, now that uh, isn't wired up at the moment the wires are just um, sticking through there the reason being is that I did try to wire this in with the resistor by shortening the leads and also shortening the, uh, the leads on the resistor as well but it just didn't work I couldn't get it in there the only way that it would go in is if this light was actually sitting right underneath the dome which is something that I don't want it to do because it's it's only meant to be a glow rather than a, a full-on blast of light coming through so when this is attached to the main hull um, I'll then put the resistor on and then wire it up and then we can run the wires through that way it's about the only way really to be fair to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the top on and then I'm going to switch it uh, put it onto the battery and you're able to see what the light looks like coming through there so if you just bear with me a second guys I'll just get this clamped whoops this clamp doesn't want to be handled it wants to run away right okay so there we go I'll just put that down for a second whilst I sort the uh, the battery out. The wires are a bit like spaghetti, they get everywhere. Right, okay guys, so there we go. Let's bring that up to the camera. You can hopefully see there's a, a nice little glow coming through uh, the ends there. Now this one does look a little bit worse because it's got that bit of... Um, tape in the way but as you can see that's it's not too bad actually it's it's kind of giving me the glow that I want and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly turn the lights off for you um, and I'm going to get the piece of plastic or the piece of uh, clear plastic that I'm going to use to to wire that up oh my wires have fallen apart again guys sorry about this there we go okay so I'll turn the lights out there we go Okay, so try not to get my finger in the way. Oops, there you go. You can see that again. That's kind of been slightly overexposed by the camera, but then this isn't in place properly at the moment, so that should dull down a little bit more. But that's kind of where we need to be, really, with that light. It doesn't need to be too bright. And as you can see, if I take my finger away from there, you can see that the light doesn't get to that dome part which is just there which is a bit of a shame okay so let's turn the lights back on there is some uh, more good news guys um, I've got a stand being built for me now the company that I approached to begin with I'm not going to mention their names because I think that would be a bit unfair but the company that um, I did approach um, that you know they said that they make bespoke stands I gave them the measurements of the stand that I wanted uh, and they come back with to me and basically said uh, you know sorry we're not going to do it because uh, you need to order a minimum of 10 because of the tooling and I'm well you know hold on a minute it's it's a stand you know um, why do you need tooling you just get a saw and you cut up a couple of bits of wood and, and you, you glue it together there's no tooling involved you know you need tooling if you're going to make a car not a stand but there you go so anyway, a good friend of mine who I work with, um, 
I was talking to her about it. She intervened and spoke to her neighbour who happens to be a master carpenter. Um, and he's going to build it for me, which is fantastic. So hopefully I should have that uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, so that's going to be quite exciting. So as soon as that comes in, guys, I will let you know. Um, and I'll let you see what it looks like. Now, I'm not sure whether it's going to be varnished or not. It depends. If he's got a dark varnish, he said that he will do it with that. But if he hasn't, then that's fine. What I'll do is I'll just prime it, uh, paint it black, and then gloss it myself. And that'll be fine. Um, but yes, I'm quite happy about that. Um, we've made some inroads on the stand there, which is absolutely fantastic. So hopefully what I'm going to be doing um, over the next couple of days is um, putting the masking tape on the windows. Now it's going to take a bit of time, to be fair. Um, and then after that, it's going to be primed, and then we can start laying the, uh, the primary colours down on the ship itself. So hopefully, guys, we should have some pretty good progress come uh, the next update. So until then, thanks for watching, and please do take care. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.